If you love Chevys, then this is the place for you. This is the Menard Chevy Series, where we tour the country to find the finest race cars and rides that are part of the bowtie breed. to the Bernard Chevy Series from Harlan Park, Topeka, Kansas. You ever seen a pit walk on TV? We're doing our own pit walk here in the Chevrolet Car Show area. Beautiful 56 Chevrolet. Fantastic big block Chevy powered Chevelle. Moving down here, we got a 55 Chevrolet, got the old school red anodized valve covers and air cleaner on it. How about this LS swapped little Chevy 2 Nova? Beautiful car, tons of horsepower, modern drivability, and bam, bright orange Pro Touring 1966 Chevelle. Doesn't get any cooler than that, got a big block under the hood. And hey, look, here's a fan. Let's find out what he thinks of the show. What do you think, bud? That good, huh? You don't have to be nervous, just the two of us talking. Yeah, well, he's no fun. Stick with us. We're going to bring you our first producer's pick from Heartland Park, Topeka, Kansas, right now. This is one of the most subtly modified yet beautiful 67 Chevelles I think we've ever seen. Talk to me about what has actually been done to the body of this car, because it's a lot. Uh, yeah, basically the top's been chopped four inches, uh, door handle shaved, it's been lowered two more inches, and just a lot of different modifications to bumpers, uh, suspension, exhaust, There's about nothing on this car stock. How'd you decide on the four inches? Uh, you know what, a bunch of guys drinking beer in a garage and uh, we decided that we were going to just start playing with what might work best and it ended up turning out alright. And inside the car is just as nice as the outside. When we had the interior done, I talked to the, uh, the upholster guy and told him I just wanted to kind of match the interior to the exterior. Clean lines and uh, kind of do his own thing. How often are you able to get it out and about? Uh, not often enough. My wife would like to have it out more often, but uh, maybe a couple times a year. Well, this week's Duracell Crank It with the Copper Top Award winner is a spectacular 1956 Chevrolet Corvette owned by this man, Bob Streff. Tell me the story of how you got this car, because it's pretty funny. We are trading from a friend of mine. I had an old car he wanted. Back then, none of these old cars were worth anything, so we ended up just trading each other. That's how it got started. I parked it in my garage for about 30 years. I really thought it was going to be my kids' college education, but it turned out at that time I didn't need the money, so I just kept the car. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a twin four-barrel car, so it was a really hot piece rolling out of the factory in 56, and I'm sure the new stuff may have more power, but this thing still must get down the road pretty good. It, it does pretty good. Uh, it's got the original three-speed in it, dual fours, of course, 265 motor. It's, everything's been gone through, and it, it, it's just a nice old car. The 56 is an interesting uh, piece in Corvette history because of the fact that it wasn't really till 57 that the production numbers got really high. Do you have any idea of how many of these they actually made? Give them a round number. Somewhere around 3,400 of them. Well, Bob, it's kind of rare to see a Corvette like this with the coves being the same color as the body. Right. Uh, back then, you could have the coves painted at the factory for $19. <laughs> and th that is the original color, full of white. It's neat, and again, we talked about just 3,400 of these things produced back in 56, and a very small subsection of those probably didn't have that $19 investment made. <laughs> that, that is true. And 57, which is basically the same body, but they just doubled their production. Yeah, to, the Corvette story is pretty wild in the fact that the early cars really were not that popular because they didn't have the power. Then the power showed up and people really started to turn these things into American icons. Yeah, I knew that car was probably $3,400, $3,500. Well, Bob, you got the you got the Duracell copper top battery in here, helping you fire that little uh, that little 265 up, and you got to be loving that. <laughs> it's a good battery. Well, thanks so much for being out here this weekend at Heartland Park, Topeka. The car is gorgeous, and it's great to see a piece that's been in your family for a half a century. Thank you. So our next producer's pick is a jaw-dropping 1957 Chevy 210, owned by this man, Mason Bach. And dude, you gotta tell me about this car because again, every inch of this thing has been touched in one way or the other. We've had this thing for 28 years and second time it's been built and we went all out on this thing. You went all out in a really classy, kind of subtle way. Walk me through the, the decisions that were made on the paint and the interior here. My dad originally had a black 57 in high school. 
you wanted a black, but black just doesn't pop as much anymore. So we went with the uh, Hot Hues uh, Starry Night Metallic Gray. And then on the interior, to go with it, to kind of make the, to complement the gray, we went with the maroon cowhide. So there's 24 hides in the interior. That is a half a herd you got right yeah, there. Yeah. It's got a Roadster Shop chassis under it and a uh, Chevy uh, LS9 ZR1 motor in it and a uh, T56 Magnum transmission. It doesn't have any emission stuff on it and it's had a little bit fuel system upgrades. We're thinking about 700. Well, congratulations on the build. You, you maintained the whole feel of a 57 Chevy, but you brought it up to modern standards and it is spectacular. Thanks a lot, I really appreciate it. We've got more of the Menard Chevy series from Heartland Park, Topeka coming up, including one incredible truck that defies description. We'll be right back. Menard Chevy Series is being brought to you in part by Dustless Blasting. It's the future of surface preparation. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. B&M Racing and Performance, quality performance products that work. And by Vintage Flats, spray what the pros use. Welcome back to the Nard Chevy Series here at Harlem Park, Topeka, Kansas. We see a lot of 1970 Chevelles across the country, but we never have, nor will we ever again see a 1970 Chevelle with a nose like this one. No, it's not just the halo style LED headlights. It's this grill, handmade by a company in Las Vegas. It's a one-off. They normally only do stuff for big luxury SUVs. The owner of this car says, you gotta help me, I need one of these things. And you know what? They took on the job one time and one time only. This Chevelle is gorgeous, and our next award winner is also a magnificent Chevelle. This week's OPGI original winner is the 1967 Chevelle of TJ Lewis. TJ, it's a showstopper. It's got the nice black paint, an original SS car. Talk to me about your history with this thing, because I know it spans a couple of decades. Well, I've had it 32 years, and when we found it, it was a mess, and uh, just spent a lot of time having it, having it tweaked up, and finally got it where we liked it, so. Along those th three decades that you've owned this car, it has not always been black, has it? No, I, I bought it, it was uh, brown, and then uh, me and a friend of, redid the car, and we weren't good enough body people, so it was a white car with a white top. Always had the gold interior in it, though, so. It's gonna be fairly unique. You don't see a lot of Chevelles running around with that gold, with the gold interior. Well, it's a true, uh, it could be a gold, gold car in 67. This car was a gold car, and I just don't like the color of gold in 67, so, and I like black. Everything I have is black, so. Talk to me about OPGI's role here. What uh, what kind of parts and pieces did you source from them when you when you were bringing the car back? Uh, most everything on the car that you see that's that's shiny is from them. Uh, from the grill to the exhaust tips, uh, the air cleaner, the valve covers, the uh, uh, disc brakes that are on the car they're all from OPG. The interior kits from OPG. Uh, if I need it, that's where I go. It's fantastic. And what was it back in 1967 that caught your eye about these cars, and what keeps you loving them today? Well, a friend of mine let me drive a 66 Chevelle, and I, at the time I was driving a 63 Impala, and I thought that was a pretty quick car. And then, uh, so I ordered a 67 SS car, and uh, yeah, I've had a 67 and a 69, and, and right now my son has a 70. That's a gold car with black stripes. It's, again, all the parts from OPG, and, uh, and he's had that car since he was in uh, high school. It was his high school car. He bought it when he was 14 years old, and he is now 49, so he's had that car a while, too. Tell you what, so it's just genetic then. <laughs> the Lewis family has Chevelle fever, it's genetic. Well, TJ, thanks so much for being out here this weekend at Harlan Park, Topeka. The car is spectacular. Congrats on the OPGI original award. Thank you, I appreciate it very much. Thank you all. I'll tell you what, everything on this fifth gen Camaro is hinged. We found a truck on the other side of the Menard Chevy Series event here in Topeka, Kansas that is completely unhinged. Check this out. This is a 1969 International Cab Over Truck, small block Chevy behind the cab, and the rest of it, you built yourself. I think one of the more dramatic parts of the truck, of course, that big kind of whale tail spoiler on the back. Tell me about what inspired that look. Well, I mean, it, it needed some balance. I mean, the frame is the body, so it had to have shape. It needed some balance, because you got this big box on the front, it needed something back there. I had to make the wing heavy, and then I had to add 400 pounds of weight to it, because I could literally pull the back of the truck sideways on my floor. It was that, that nose heavy, but it, it rides like a Cadillac now. And one of the reasons it rides like a Cadillac is because of the front suspension views. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's got an 03 Crown Vic front, you know, front cross member. They're beautiful. You, you, you 
pressure wash them off, bolt them in. It's a pretty cool way to get disc brakes and power rack in one quick unit. So they're, they're too wide for hot rod, but they're perfect for trucks. And the rear axle, you got a, a quick change style back there with the wide five wheels. Again, all of this stuff just works so well together. And if you told anybody on paper what this was, they'd probably go cross-eyed. Oh, no doubt about it. I'm not, my, my first love in racing, was, where I'm still a sprint car guy. So I, there's some sprint car inspiration in here anywhere you look. And they'll, I buy them old quick changes up. And uh, I got like four of them hanging on the wall. I'll wait for the next project. One of Chevrolet's hottest and most fun performance models through the 1960s were the Shoebox Era Nova Super Sports. This 1967 model is the winner of this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. John Finley, this is your car, and it is a car you have driven a whole bunch. Driven it 26,000 miles since I finished it. And how long has that been? I got it originally, found it by the railroad tracks in 1978. Been together for about 12, 13 years. You get out here and use it during these nice uh, during these nice spring, fall, and summer months out here in the uh, Midwest. I drive it all the time. I even took it to Phoenix in November. It was snowing here when I left. <laughs> Tell me about the drivetrain in the car, because you've kept this thing pretty true to form. Yes, it's a small block, 350 engine, 30 over. It's got an overdrive transmission, so uh, I get real good gas mileage. Get about 22 miles to the gallon on the highway. Great engine. Runs good, drives good, vintage air, so it's a comfortable car. Uh, just run it all the time. When you found this thing sitting by the railroad tracks, what made you look at it and go, I could save this? I've been a Nova nut for years. I've had, I don't know how many Novas, probably 25 different Novas. I had a red one that I just dearly loved and somebody talked me out of it with a bunch of money. When I found this one, I said, this is it. I'm never gonna sell it. I put my daughter's name on the title. <laughs> now talk to me about Rock Auto, what kind of role they played here, not only your restoration, but your continued use of this car. I uh, buy Rock Auto parts for just about everything that I do, except for, you know, the specialty stuff, you know, high dollar disc brakes and stuff like that, but any suspension parts, uh, engine parts, whatever, uh, Rock Auto is, is a good place to buy stuff, good dependable parts, uh, they're good parts and uh, reasonably priced. Well, John, thanks very much. There's nothing cooler than a guy who not only loves his car, but also drives it, and you have proven that uh, you're both of those things. Yes, thank you very much. Plenty more of the Menard Chevy Series from Heartland Park, Topeka to come, including a work truck that delivers the goods in hot rod style. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Series here at Harlan Park, Topeka, Kansas. Each and every week on the show, we have an LMC Truck Award winner. The reason we have that is because of the great support we've gotten from LMC. I'm here with Scott Barrett from LMC Truck. Scott, you're a local company here to the uh, Harlan Park, Topeka area, and it's fantastic to have you at the show. Well, we've always loved supporting the series. Uh, it's pretty important to us to get our parts out and make everybody know what is available. So LMC Truck has built a reputation over the years for quality and for having pretty much anything anyone needs in the realm of Chevrolets from the classics all the way to near late model trucks. Every bit of it. We try to go back to 47 on Chevy GMC, back to 48 on Ford and 72 on Dodge. And so we're searching the world, trying to find parts uh, to make it as complete as we can. We definitely don't want any vehicles to go to the crusher, so we want to make them complete. Well, pickup trucks are total Americana, especially those with the bow ties hanging off the front of them. And talk to me about what your typical customer is looking for when they contact LMC Truck. Well, generally, they, they'll really start with the weather strip. That's probably the biggest component that they go after, trying to seal up the leaks and the whistles. And so that's probably the most important start. Uh, and then they work on that interior. The interiors are, seem to be very popular and we seem to have a good coverage of that and the colors that they're looking for, especially black. Everybody loves to go that black route. Well, I can tell you that the LMC Truck Award that each and every Menard Chevy Series is a coveted one, and we have a great winner this week. It's a 1968 C10 packed with a ton of your parts. Oh, he's done a beautiful job with this truck, and we're very proud of what we're looking at here today. Uh, we love giving this award to somebody that's really put the time and effort in, and he's definitely done it. Well, Les, obviously you took a very kind of classic, classy approach to building this truck. Tell me what's behind the look. Uh, I just didn't, I didn't want uh, slammed all the way to the ground, completely unpractical. I wanted it to still be a truck and still be a drivable, usable, although very carefully usable vehicle. Uh, the paint on the truck, the blue is a nautical blue metallic from a late 80s Mercedes. 
and then the silver is a Jeep silver. Um, the color inspiration was actually my 2003 Harley Davidson. How about the woodworking in the cab? Tell me about that. I stole the idea. The original owner of the truck had um, some wood pieces in it. Uh, they weren't done very well. So uh, I kind of took his idea and worked with a, a local guy to uh, do some CNC cutting. And he did all the cut work, and then I did all the finish work on it. So how come long bed down a short bed? Uh, cheaper. I actually like the looks of the long beds, uh, especially I like the fleet sides better than the step sides. So uh, it's, it's what I had available, and I didn't want to chop on it. So it stayed a long bed. What is your favorite element of the truck? Uh, probably the woodwork in the in the interior is my favorite thing. That's that gets a lot of attention, gets a lot of people to look inside. And uh, tell me about the engine and drivetrain. Uh, it's a, the original 327. Uh, it's been modified a little bit. Um, TH400 transmission, uh, lowered with drop spindles on the front and then springs on the back. Uh, just a static drop, it's not bagged. The wheels are a classic rally wheel design. Uh, they're American racing wheels. These are 18 inch versus the 15 inch originals. Uh, just like it's something different than the, the torque thrust or the Krager mags that you see on most of them. Well, Les, thanks for bringing out your incredible truck this weekend. It is spectacular. To tell your story about your truck, go to lmctrucklife.com today. Tell us all about it. This week's Mini's Top Dog Award winner is one of the most unique trucks we have ever seen at a Menard Chevy Series event. Mr. Bob Galding, congratulations on the award and tell us about this incredible piece. It's a 1938 Chevy one-ton truck that I found in Arkansas and the tank I found right there in Woodson County, Kansas, and that's when it started. Now, my understanding is you found the tank before the truck, right? A couple of years before we found the truck. You know, I sat out to my sons for uh, a couple of years on railroad ties. I was looking for a 46 Chevy truck, and this, this one come by, and that's what I decided to go with. Modifications, I think, are some of the most interesting parts of this vehicle. Tell me about what you had to do to make everything fit and what you had to do to the tank to get it, the proportions right. Well, we shortened the tank. It had a four-compartment tank. Uh, it had an extra 150-gallon tank. So tanks on it right now are 100-gallon tanks, and we took the 150 off. And the brass, man. The brass is, the, so I think, part of the most impressive part of this thing because I don't think you can find it anywhere you anymore. Can't find, you can't find that brass anywhere. We're trying to find the brass for another tank that we're building. And uh, the truck now, it was a rust-free truck. And we put it together. Suspension-wise, it's interesting because you're using the factory frame, but boy, that front end's not even close. No, the front end is out of a 76 Chevy one-ton dually that we, we narrowed the front end put a uh, power rack on the back side of it, and uh, that one got to be uh, quite a project. So Bob, what's really cool about this thing is there is a family connection. Now, the idea of the Galding Oil Company isn't just something fictitious, it's the family business. It's family business. Uh, my folks started it in 1947, and uh, my brother-in-law and I uh, run it up until two years ago, and we re retired, and uh, it's still operational right now. We sold it. These boys are doing a real good job with it. Now you've had the truck done for about a year. You must have, have you got used to all the attention it's gotten so far? <laughs> no. Uh, I had a friend of mine said, he was sat there with me for a, had a car show one day. He said, I wish I had a quarter for every time that picture was taken <laughs> of that truck. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we'll have a Camaro that is one polished performer when the Menard Chevy Series returns to Heartland Park, Topeka. Menard Chevy Series is being brought to you in part by LMC Truck. Restore, maintain, customize. Economax. Get better performance from your engine. Stage 8. The world's best locking fastener. And by MRT Performance. For performance car parts and servicing. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Series. Heartland Park Topeka is one of drag racing's legendary quick time and high speed tracks. And it's also home to a strong field of bracket racers. So the Midwestern part of the country has had a ton of great hot rod and drag racing history over the years. This 1950 Chevrolet Gasser is an example of that. The other great thing about this area, Heartland Park Topeka. It's going strong and it continues to grow. We cut up with track manager Scott Gardner to learn more. Well, I'll tell you what, it's super to have this event here, growing leaps and bounds. We're excited about it. Looking forward to next year already. Oh, we've got everything, multiple venues. We've got six different venues out here. You like racing, you'll love Heartland Park, that's for sure. 
Good, had a great national event. Looking forward to next year, 2017 is going to be a great season here. So the Menard Chevy Series, you got some really cool events going on, but really inside this, the Sportsman Drag Racing is kind of the heart. Yeah, over 200 Sportsman cars here today, all different classes from the novices. The guys really experienced, so a lot of great stuff happening with them as well. So much great stuff to see at Eddie Menard's Chevy Series event, but some cars literally grab us right by the throat and make us come look at them. That's the case with Rod Gatewood's 1970 and a half Chevrolet RS Z28 Camaro. Now there's not mechanically much left of that RS Z28 car. Tell us what's powering this thing and tell us about the paint body. It's a uh, 07 LS2. It's got a 408 in it. Uh, supercharged, the maximum supercharger, 4L60, uh, factory 12 bolt, 355 gears. It's a 70 and a half. It is a true RSD28 Camaro. And as far as the color choices on the car, I mean, this thing literally jumps at your eyes. You got the bright green, the, the silver stripes. How'd you end up with that? I looked at a lot of colors. I was between orange and green. I wanted a green, something that jumps out at you. Where I'd go to a show with 2,000 cars, I'd be the rare one. The motor and trans, like we talked about, supercharged LS motor that originally came out of a Trailblazer, correct? Yeah, it came out of an 07 Trailblazer SS, two wheel drive, uh, some motor and tranny, but then we stroked it and it is a 408 now. All the piping was done by a good friend of mine, Tim Webb. He did all the piping for me, and we just wanted something different. Let's get it the old school blower look, but all fuel injected, everything like that, something reliable. You know, we can drive down the road, get 20 miles a gallon, and cruise 85 miles an hour, wherever we want to go. Shane, the trailer queen. And this thing will probably roast the tires at highway speed if you feel like it. Uh, only when we want to. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your favorite, what's your favorite part about the car? I like it all, man, every bit of it. You know, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It gets a lot of attention. Yeah, I'd, I'd have, I get more attention, more satisfaction out of people coming and talking to me about it than I do any awards. It has been a fantastic day at Heartland Park, Topeka. We wish we could stay here longer and show you even more stuff, but we're out of time. The Menard Chevy Series travels the country, so make sure you check out our schedule to find out where we're going to be and if we're going to be at a track close to you. Next week, we'll be coming to you from Bakersfield, California with more great Chevrolets. Come hang out with us then.